Now, as promised, and there's a lot of folks listening tonight that are pretty excited about this interview, we are going to have a conversation with uh, a gentleman who was the singer for the band Kraut and End of Hope and Sister Tracy. 1969, by the way. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were close. <laughs> Your OCD wouldn't, you had to tell me right now, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> Cactus, 1969. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Davey Gunner to the Church of Rock. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. How's everything? It's going, really, me. going really good. You were telling us off the air that you just had a little birthday celebration for your daughter yesterday so davy's a father yes nice to be seven years old even wow man i remember yeah, those days a, she's good she's learning the uh, ropes and she's learning some bass and piano and she's doing a list she actually wrote a few songs herself so hopefully it's still running you know runs in the blood totally where are you guys located at uh we're located in good old astoria queens where uh where crowd started uh, i lived in a few different places throughout my life, but I wound up uh, settling back here uh, in the story of Queens where uh, hardcore all started. Yep, and you've definitely got the accent, bro. <laughs> <laughs> definitely got the Queens accent, yeah. Um, so yeah, some of the famous residents of Queens, uh, the Ramones were from there, correct? Yeah, the Ramones were from, uh, actually, I think Dee Dee was from either Long Island City yeah. or Story or something, or some part of Queens over there, and the rest of the guys were from... Uh, uh, Forest Hills. Okay, my bad. I could have swore it was Queens. I'm. I think I'm mistaking one of their lyrics. Yeah, Queens. Yeah, Forest yeah. Hill Queens. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that is Queens. Yeah. Did you ever know the Ramones guys? Mm, no, I didn't know them personally, but I got to play with them on several occasions. Oh, lucky wow, you. that's a really neat thing. So, tell us about uh, for the folks that weren't around. I, I remember back in 1983, MTV hits the airwaves. It's like this huge huge revelation for kids around the country because we before that had no outlet for like live music or anything like that or videos and then all of a sudden there's this 24-hour channel playing rock and roll and new wave and just cool stuff and then boom there's the first punk rock video in regular rotation by a band called kraut with a song yeah. called we're all twisted and man did we love that song and we still do yeah it's it's a great story how that whole thing went down. We got really lucky. Um, my bass player Donnie had a friend of his who, who was in the business of making, uh, f you know, starting off to make films and stuff. He was actually in school. He got some kind of project, and we were the project. So we got really lucky. And uh, you know, MTV was looking for certain types of music, all different types of music, in fact. And you know, uh, Kraut got you know fortunate, and we they they played all twisted. Pretty much all the time. It wasn't on super heavy rotation, but it was on a lot of uh, key times. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people were watching, um, and, you know, and it's crazy. Yeah, I think if you listen to one of the Cars songs uh, with Rick Ocasek, he, uh, um, oh, oh, It's Magic. Yeah. There's a part of the song where he goes, uh, you know, you're all twisted. <laughs> yeah, he, and we swear that that was part of that whole thing that, you know, when that video was on, people were watching, you know, it's 24 hours a day. So you could be either on the East Coast or West Coast, according to where you are, and you're watching this video and it's coming on. And you're like, what's this? This is, you know, this is hardcore. This is punk. This is raw. Yeah. And that's what it was. So we just got lucky. It was good. It really helped out the career. Yeah. It sounds like it was a big timing, a timing kind of thing. And boy, how lucky. Yeah. Timing's everything, as you know. I mean, I think there's a certain type of preparedness and readiness. If you love to do something like you guys obviously do what you do there and whatever somebody does. And then it's sort of like when you're ready, if you happen to have the right moment in time and you get the opportunity, you make the best of the opportunity. That's pretty much happened with crowd. You know, we were the first punk hardcore band in 1981. have a video on MTV and get great shows. It got us the, uh, an opportunity. We played with the clash. So basically, are you saying that Kraut did form in 1981 then? Yeah, we formed in um, early 81. Wow. And then six months later, not even like, yeah, about six months, we played June 11th, which is coming up. It'll be 39 years, June 11th, uh, 1981 with the Clash at Bonds wow. in uh, Times Square. Yeah. So let me ask you this. When that song came out, how did things change for Kraut? Did you just get gigs offered to you left and right all of a sudden? Yeah, exactly. Um, it was one of those things, buddy, where, you know, you're just like, you know, it's, it's all kind of new. I mean, 
you know, after that, I mean, ton of music came out of Queens, but, you know, more bands, you know, you know, hardcore and stuff, you know, Quicksand and Leeway and all these great bands. But basically when we did it, we were one of the first and we sort of just got vacuumed into that whole, that whole time. I mean, think about it, the New York Dolls and Blondie and Talking Heads and all these great bands were playing at CBGB's and that whole thing kind of faded out and this whole new punk thing started and we were just right there and it completely helped us out. Um, and gave us great opportunities. Yeah, everything was timing. Do you, um, did you guys play a lot of Europe shows? No, unfortunately, we didn't. And that's a very, very that's a very uh, unique thing about this band. Um, you know, the time that we were together f- for the short time we were together, it's uh, it's sort of like we were just about to get into that European thing, as it would turn out. If you you know, like in retrospect, but my guitar player, Doug Holland, great songwriter, great guitar player. He's the one who started the Van Kraut. Um, he he wound up joining the Chromax. Okay. And he left the band. And we wound up getting Chris Smith from the Kind of Saints. And he was our guitar player. For, wow. Yeah. For, yeah re- uh, rest, in, moved, rest in peace, Chris. Well, that's what happened. Yeah, he came from the West Coast to the East Coast, and he joined Kraut. And it was a good time, and he played he just fit right in he's a, he was chris was a great person great guitar player you know and so yeah we, we actually uh interviewed george uh from battalion of saints last yeah, year and he, and he talked about uh the fact that chris joined kraut that's right yeah and he came in and uh, he was really filled right in did some great work he was you know, very unique way he played his style and it added a new edge to kraut but then he suddenly passed away and and i was that and then everybody kind of just split up and doing other things since then now did the kraut band like so many others have any issues with alcohol or drugs or did you guys stay clear of that stuff besides chris no nah, yeah no it was just it was just basically i think that was like a like an isolated incident you know yeah and that was it yeah for that yeah i wondered about that and uh are you still in touch with the uh former brothers from the band kraut uh johnny Fitt, the original drummer he he lives in uh, scotland i spoke to him probably about two years ago we don't stay in touch too much i just spoke to don cowan the bass player two weeks ago actually he's out in long island um new york on the island and doug holland he's upstate uh living somewhere in new york i haven't spoken to him quite some time we did a some reunion shows and we did some other uh rehearsing things but no nothing going off with quite at the moment just you know touch here and there do you think uh, in the future there might be a, a gig or two for Kraut for special occasions, perhaps? Uh, I mean, I would say, if you give me percentage words, I would say like 90% no. Yeah. But, so, you know, I learned in this life at my age, <laughs> you know, playing music so long with different people and different cats and stuff and doing different things that you never say never. Yeah, it took me many, many years to learn that, and it caused me a lot of problems <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I'm retired like a hundred times, and then I know I'm not. Yeah. And people are like, well, you might not be retired, but we're done with you. <laughs> yeah, well, I took, you know, I took some time off and I started doing other things in my life that I wanted to do. I'm a big, like I'm an avid, you know, trout fisher. I mean, I, I trout fish, you know, fly fish, and I go upstate New York and everything. And so I took a lot of time to do that. And I like to play golf, so I was doing other things like that. And then just took time off for myself to get, just to do other things. And then yeah. I kind of got reacquainted with, I was always working on music, but never, anything solid a project here a project there then a few years off and everything and kind of played in some really good stuff with great musicians i've been very fortunate in that way to meet and play with so many different people but then uh the last two years i started to get back into it and and putting records out and doing something serious yeah it sounds like your phone's going a little bit muffly sorry to to complain okay yeah how's uh, that a little bit better yes it is and then now, of course, these days, you are fronting a band called End of Hope. You had a debut album that came out November 19th called Cease and Destroy, nine songs. Yes. Um, tell us about uh, what's the difference in sound com- from Kraut to End of Hope. Well, this is a great story. Uh, there's, been, there's been a great music scene like Resurgence in New York um, over the last few years. And then uh, I wind up, uh, I was playing in a band called Bullhead for a while. And collaborating with those guys. Those guys are great. And basically what happened was um, I was starting to have other ideas about what I wanted to do. And I met a friend of mine who plays, uh, uh, like a top player, Ken, who plays in a band called uh, Eternal Black. And I guess, you know, we had done a show with them and we were all friendly. Everybody started trading ideas. And one day we were just talking about music, philosophy. I mean, we were talking about a few times. We just sort of jived together. And he approached me with this great idea. And I said, that sounds great. Let me hear something. And he 
he played something for me. I was like, that's perfect, you know. And the style what he came up with, like a little, you know, uh, cross type of music. And I'm sure, I don't know if you listened, did you get a chance to listen to the CD? I, I've listened to some of the songs, not all nine. Yeah. It's like Motorhead, this is the Black Flag type of thing, I guess the best thing to mention it. Because he plays in a doom band, and the way he writes, his style of writing is, is that style of guitar, you know, tuned down to a D. So that's what we do. And we just, uh, it's, it's a great project. So we sort of, uh, he's so many musicians he had. I met him. Uh, Dave Secchi is on bass, and um, another David on drums, who's a fantastic drummer. They were Richmond, so it's a great line of great people, and and it's hard to do. Yeah, and you know, um, are you guys going to be doing any touring if the pandemic stuff lefts up, or will you be doing anything to yeah, promote we, it? You know, yeah, you, I mean, we came out of the gate real quick. We wrote those songs. Uh, we wrote that whole all those nine songs like in a basically in about a um, four or five month span, and and then recorded them. So the whole thing was recorded in about eight months. You know, written and was recorded, and we had a flow going. And we were playing a whole bunch of shows, Jersey, New York, East Coast, Connecticut. And we just had some stuff booked. We were doing Boston. And um, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, the show got canceled. Everything got canceled down here. Yeah. We had some other shows. We were going to play Baltimore and uh, Ohio. We uh, had some ideas we were going to do. We we're going to shoot down to Florida. And it just, you know, everything fell through. But everything's on hold now. But yeah, we planned on doing that. We were doing a lot of shows at the you know, when we yeah. doing, everything kind of broke up with the pandemic. So well, let's hope things get back to somewhat normal. I sure hope so. No doubt, man. Are, are you? Have you been holding up with your family mostly? Yeah, everything's been good. Just missing getting to the studio with the boys. You know, home life is fine. Able to work out. You know, both of my wife can work at our home, so you know that's good. But the, I think the thing that I miss most is getting together with my brothers and playing music and, and creating. You know those moments. You know. Yeah. You know what I mean. If you are just tuning in, you're listening to KSKQ Radio and, of course, the Church of Rock Radio Show. We are talking with Davey Gunner from the band Kraut and End of Hope. Uh, please excuse us. You know, technology sometimes is, doesn't work with us. It's a little muffly and in and out because of the cell phones. But we are really happy to have Davey joining us here talking about music. And, um, yeah, man, really digging it. We're going to play a song shortly, which is called The Arc of Movement by End of Hope. <laughs> and I, I wanted to Can say... I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Why did you, why'd you choose that one? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just it just kind of jumped out at me. I liked it a lot. I'm glad you did. It's it's quite different. Uh, that 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 song is quite different. It's very that's so awesome. You picked that song out. And uh, just to tell you real quick, um, there's a video that's that's out now. It's uh, if you go to End of Hope to the band camp, uh, uh, that's what the record is. But if you go to Facebook, you'll see a video of that song, Arc of Movement, uh -huh. with Ken, my guitar player, did a brilliant job of taking um, live footage that we had just recently shot, too, from different locations uh, for our record release party, and then prior to that. And he did a great job editing the footage to the song. And it's it's crazy because it's just it's like it's almost like right on like it looks it looks like it was happening all the cymbal splashes and guitar boards it's really cool yeah so my, you get a chance to check that out you're gonna dig it yeah there you go the band is End of Hope and the video is uh, called Arc of Movement we have a lot of our yes. very loyal listeners so I'm sure that at this point there's probably a couple people already checking that out maybe you never know um you know, know. your band name is um, End of Hope. Who named the band that, and was anyone depressed when they named it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, yeah, when Ken, I was, um, I was with, you know, the day Ken approached me about it, he told me, we were, we were actually, we were at a show at St. Vitus, I can't remember what the show was right now, oh man, what was it, I, I wish I could remember, you know, we went out, you know, the band, you know, one of the bands ended, it was like a five-band bill, and we uh, went down the corner to have a drink, and he said, listen, that idea I told you about, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. He goes, and this is the name, End of Hope. And I was like, wow, that's heavy. That's perfect. Let's it, go with it. It really is, man. I was like, well, I got to yeah. ask about that. I hate to be pessimistic. It's, you know, it's pessimistic, but it's just, you know, sometimes you just need a slap in the face and just say it. <laughs> there you go. And you were saying that the song Arc of Movement is different than a lot of your other material. Uh, we're not, we don't do real long interviews. I want to say thanks a million for you, you know, making the time to yes. come talk to me and Trace. Um, what is the deal with Arc of Movement? Can you explain maybe as an artist or songwriter what, what you guys had in mind when you wrote this song? Yeah, well, I write all the lyrics to to everything in these songs. Um, 
so basically I'll get the music from these guys and when I heard that song when it starts off dun, 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 wow, and it breaks right into it and it's just so down and I was feeling just really down about things at a particular moment it was about a year and a half ago and I jotted down these lyrics and it was sort of just on a piece of paper and then when we got into the studio somebody mentioned a lack of movement and everything just fell into place. So when I wrote it, it was about um, you just feeling down, and sometimes you just you, you know you just you just want to forget everything. You just want it to all go away, and you can just think of a better day, you know. And that's basically what it sounds. It's a pretty down the song, but if, if you listen to the lyrics, it's, there's parts of it that when it goes to the quick hardcore part, you know, it's a little more like you know uplifting and the person saying to himself, "Hey, listen, you, you know." I just want this to end, but, you know, what can I do? You know, like, I don't want the pain anymore. You know, what can I do? You know, like, there's got to be a solution. Wow. So, yeah, it's a pretty, yeah, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty dark. I learned a year and a half ago when it was some, you know, thoughts going on in my mind about certain things, and it came out on a piece of paper, and it's beautiful. Awesome. Well, thanks for explaining that. You are listening to Davey Gunner from Kraut and End of Hope uh, at the Church of Rock. Davey, thanks a million uh, for making the time, bro, to be on our show. We appreciate you, man. And uh, looking forward to hearing the rest of the album that I haven't heard yet. And uh, I wish you and your family the best, my friend. Yes. Yeah, so likewise, too. Thanks for, Trace, for having me. I really appreciate the, you know, uh, the time and the opportunity. And I uh, wish you all the best. And uh, I'll get that CD out to you. As soon as I possibly can. Sounds great, man. It. We appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you, man. We appreciate what you're doing with End of Hope, too, dude. And, um, you know, keep I us. Appreciate po- it. We keep rocking and rolling, even at my age. We keep going. We keep doing it. You are hardcore. Goodbye, Sister Tracy. Yes, thank you thank so you. much, and we appreciate it. And we hope to talk to I you soon it. in the near future. Thank you. Take care, brother. Thank you, you too. Likewise. Thank you. Likewise. Cheers.